The Komodo's autofocus should not be able to do this, and yet it does. In this video, I'm going to show you examples of how well the autofocus on Komodo actually works. And I'm going to make sure that I cover the one thing that a lot of other videos that talk about autofocus on Komodo manage to skip because I think it's really valuable and important that we all understand that. When you think about autofocus on a camera system, Canon and Sony own the top echelon in that category. And arguably, they've set the standard by which autofocus is judged. And of course, we've all seen the numerous YouTube videos that cover autofocus on Sony and Canon cameras. In my opinion, they are the two brands that truly offer exceptional autofocus for stills, but do an okay job when it comes to video. And yes, I understand that is my opinion. And my opinion is based on my own use case experience. So how is it possible that Red Digital Cinema, on their most affordable camera, is able to give us what I would call reliable autofocus. You heard me right. I said reliable. And the reason why I'm using the word reliable when I'm talking about the autofocus on Komodo is because the autofocus system is good and reliable regardless of your lighting situation. So let me ask you this. Could you say that same sentence and believe it and have it be true if you were talking about the Canon dual pixel autofocus? You would think that the answer to that question is yes, but why don't we invite you, all you Canon owners, all you Canon shooters, why don't you share your experience on different lighting situations when trying to use dual pixel autofocus on your Canon? Be sure to leave a comment below. So let's flip that question. Is the Sony's autofocus reliable regardless of your lighting situation? If you ask me, I would say that it is very similar to Canon's. In some cases, it is better than Canon, but in other cases, it's much worse. And if you're a Sony shooter or a Sony owner and you shoot on Sony, is your autofocus system reliable regardless of the lighting situation? Be sure to share it in the comment. So let me show you these next couple of shots so you can see why I'm so excited and pumped for the possibilities with Komodo and autofocus. In this first shot, there is a single light source. Everything else is blacked out. I step into the scene and Komodo nails the autofocus. And in case you're wondering, I was using continuous autofocus, which is in beta mode on Komodo. I found that shot really interesting because you don't think of Komodo when it comes to low light and autofocus. You would normally gravitate towards the Sony a7S III. That's because of the terrific marketing and all the YouTube hype. So let's leave the hype behind. Now let's take a look at this next shot. The key light for this shot is being provided by three candlesticks. As I blow out the candlesticks, Komodo manages to keep me in focus. As a longtime Canon owner and shooter, I will say that that would have been a really tricky shot if I'd have tried it with the Canon. And if you want to see how the Sony a7S III performs, I don't think I've actually shared this before, but that, that entire video where I was comparing the Komodo against the Canon C70, and I called it an unfair comparison, that entire video was shot on the Sony a7S III. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link up above so you can check it out in case you missed it. So let me tell you what it is that I've noticed other videos that talk about autofocus and Komodo manage to miss, or at least not mention it at all. Every single lens has a minimum focusing distance. I'm sure you already knew that. But every single lens also has a maximum focusing distance or what they call infinity. And why that's important is because if, say, you want to get a nice big wide shot, but you're on a telephoto-ish lens and you reach that infinity mark, even if you turn on autofocus, the camera's really not doing any work. So when I watch some of these other videos from other creators and they manage to not tell you, hey, I was nine feet away or three meters away or 30 meters away and I was on this specific lens when I was testing my autofocus, I'm always left wondering. And in case you don't already know this, the further away you are from your subject 
or your point of interest in the sensor plane, the deeper your focusing plane becomes. In other words, more things will be in focus. And what that really means is that if you have a really deep focal plane, then you're making it really easy on the camera and the camera doesn't have to work as hard to keep things in focus. So, I challenged my Komodo. Autofocus on a red digital cinema camera. How badass are you? Can you even keep up? Komodo, I'm going to put you through a real test with a macro lens. And no, we will not be anywhere near infinity focus. So let's get to it. You see, by using a macro lens and then getting the types of shots I'm going to show you, Komodo has nowhere to hide we will see the actual performance of what the camera is able to do in this beta autofocus mode. The 100 millimeter macro lens has an incredibly short minimum focus distance. And the types of shots we're gonna show will allow the lens to focus without even coming close to the infinity focus range. I was really surprised to see how well Komodo kept me in focus. There is no focus hunting, like from my pupil to my eyelash, like you would see on other systems. Another great point is that I'm not limited by the autofocus space in the sensor. I can move regardless of where I want the autofocus point to be, and I get autofocus out of Komodo. Autofocus on Komodo just works. Autofocus on Komodo works regardless of lighting conditions. Autofocus on Komodo works regardless of your frame rate or whatever settings you want to switch to capture the shot in a way that you need it for your project. RED has managed to give us filmmakers a camera with autofocus that is not crippling the camera in any way when you choose to use it. And that is why, for me, this becomes a usable autofocus system for a cinematographer. And maybe it's not the perfect system for a videographer who might be tracking action or doing a lot of run and gunning like in weddings. But a cinematographer who plans their shots, who lights for their shots, who has a reason and a motivation behind each of the different types of shots, this becomes a real, real asset. So in my opinion, the Komodo's autofocus is straight up fire. And that's because Komodo's autofocus simply works. No gimmicks, it simply works. By most ways of measuring, the Komodo's autofocus should not be this good. And yet, it is. I'll catch up with you guys in the comments. Take care.